Right, so looking at the next question, once again is about the photoelectric effect and it's about the incoming light shining onto the metal plate and if that frequency of the incoming light is greater than or equal to the threshold frequency of the metal, we will have photoelectrons being emitted. All right, so let's look at the next question. It says a potassium metal plate is irradiated with light of a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the 7 meters. So always watch that, that they have given it to you in meters. Remember, if they haven't given it to you in meters, if it's nanometers or picometers, you need to convert to meters when you are using those uh, wavelengths in the equation. Right. So in an arrangement, as shown below, the threshold frequency of the potassium is given to you as 5,55 times 10 to the 40 hertz. And there's the diagram. So we have the incident light, that is the energy of the incoming light shining on the potassium. And if there's sufficient frequency of that incoming light, we will then have little electrons being emitted. All right. And we will then register a reading on my ammeter. Okay. To find the term threshold frequency, so threshold frequency is really just going to be the minimum frequency required to remove photoelectrons from the, um, from the metal plate. So it's a minimum frequency required to remove photoelectrons. from the potassium. And there we go. Good, so nice and easy. So remember, minimum frequency is threshold frequency. Right, calculate the energy of the photon. So here we need to see what information did they give me. They told me the wavelength. So the wavelength of the incoming light is 5 times 10 to the negative 7. All right, so that is the incoming light. So I think that's always important to identify the um, information that was given to you. So this was given as 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now if we go to our information sheet and we will find our equations here. So here we go. So we have got E equal to W naught plus EK. So we've used that one already. And here is my other equation E equals HF. That's if I've got the frequency of the incoming light. But you know what? They gave me the wavelength. So this is wavelength over here. So this is the equation I need to use. So E is the energy of the incoming light. H is going to be Planck's constant. C is the speed of light. And lambda is what was given to me. Okay, so let us go back to our question. So to work out the energy, we are going to say E equals HC over lambda you will find H, which is Planck's constant, on my information table here. So if I have a look, here it is here, right at the bottom. So here they've given it to me. So H is equal to 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. And while I'm here, they've given me the speed of light as well. So I'm going to be using those two constants. Okay, so let's go back to our equation. So H is Planck's constant is 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. Multiply by C, which is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. Divided by my wavelength. And that was given to me as 5 times 10 to the minus 7. All right. So now we go to our equation and we're going to input all that information. And because this is energy, my final answer is going to be in Joule. So let's go to our calculator. So we've got 6.63 exponent minus 34 multiplied by 3 exponent 8 and that gives me that answer divided by 5 exponent minus 7. So my final answer is 3,978. So it's 3,978 
times 10 to the minus 19 joule. And there we go. So nice and easy. Now the next question is asking you to prove that an ammeter reading will be shown. So when will the ammeter show a reading? When the incoming light has a frequency greater than or equal to the threshold frequency. So in other words, when the energy of that incoming light is greater than or equal to the work function, then we're going to have photoelectrons being emitted. So a few ways of doing it, but the way that I think will be the simplest way is to actually to go and work out the work function of the metal. So if we can work out the work function of the metal, we can see if the incoming light energy is 3,978 times 10 to the minus 19. If that is bigger than the work function, then we know we're good to go, that we're going to get a reading on the ammeter. All right, so let us go work out the work function. All right, so in order to work out the work function then, so you are going to have E equal to W naught plus your maximum kinetic energy. All right, so what do we know? We know that your, if we have a look at these equations, um, your energy of the incoming light, sorry, the work function here, this didn't come out nicely. So the work function is equal to HF naught. So H is your Planck's constant, 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. They told me that the work or the um, threshold frequency was 5,55 times 10 to the 14. That was given to me in the stem of the question. So now we just need to do that calculation. So 6.63 exponent minus 34 multiplied by 5.55 exponent 14 is equal to, and there we go. So the work function is equal to 3,68 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. So what do I notice? So our energy of the photon was 3,98. So we notice that the energy of the incoming light is greater than the work function. So therefore, photoelectrons will be emitted. And therefore, we will have a reading on my ammeter. And there we go.